Hello friends, uh, in this video we will do our first uh, the very basic simulation okay uh, which is we are going to toss the coin uh, multiple times and we'll see uh, the probability for heads and tails uh, how the outcomes look like etc okay so in the previous video we have learned that the exact probability is the ratio between the number of favorable outcomes to the number of total outcomes okay that's the exact probability now are the theoretical or analytical probability right the second way to compute the probability is simply repeat the experiment uh, n number of times and count how many times we have the favorable outcome okay so again uh, divide uh, these two numbers okay now the reason this can be different from uh, the exact probability is here we might not necessarily be computing the total number of outcomes right we might not necessarily have all favorable outcomes when we do the experiment right we can do for example imagine we have a problem where the total number of outcomes is uh, 1 billion okay and the number of favorable outcomes is 1 million okay now we may not be able to do the experiment 1 billion times so that we can observe all the 1 million favorable outcomes right but even in that case using monte carlo simulations and sampling techniques etc we still be able to compute the probability which will be very close to this exact probability okay so that's why it is, it is called observed probability right right um, let's see an example so here uh, we are loading a bunch of python libraries we are going to mainly work with this random uh, to generate some random numbers or samples etc uh, and then matplotlib for plotting and numpy maybe we, we may need to do some uh, array uh, manipulations okay so again we are asking this simple question what is the probability of heads okay so this is so simple problem we know the exact solution right so we know exactly how many possible outcomes are there the favorable what are the favorable outcomes and uh, the expected or the exact probability is simply the number of favorable outcomes divided with the number of possible outcomes so in this case it is 0 0.5 this is the exact probability okay now uh, we are going to do some uh, simulations okay all right so first we will flip the coin only once right so how many times we flip the coin we are calling it number of trials okay that's the number of trials and python has this very convenient function called random dot choices what we can do is we can provide a list of possibilities and it will return randomly it will pick one of them okay it will pick one of them and return to us now we can also provide a second variable called k this is the number of trials okay so first let me explain this function and then we will uh, look at the rest of the code so here the number of trials is one so this k value is equal to one so the possible outcomes is always going to be the same right either, either it can be heads or tails so when we when we when we run this function with k is equal to one it will return uh, a list with only one element right so in this case it happened to be heads okay now the same function here we are calling but with the number of trials uh, two meaning we are flipping the coin two times okay so this time we happen to get uh, one heads and one tail so the first time we got heads and second time we flipped the coin we got tails okay now let's say we are flipping the coin three times okay so he this time k is equal to three this means we should get three outcomes right so again in this case it happened that the first time we got hit second time we got hits and third time also we got hit and finally uh, we have number of trials four this means we'll get four outcomes here are the four outcomes they happen to be hits and hits tails and tails for the four flips we have done right so we have this very convenient function where we can give the possibilities and how many times we want to sample 
okay all right so this is the outcomes here we are simply printing the outcome so in this case we flip the coin once and we happen to got uh, uh, heads okay and we are asking the question what is the probability of heads now the number of favorable outcomes which is how many times we have heads in this list right so we have once uh, uh, heads so the observed probability is the number of favorable outcomes which is 1 and the number of trials which is also 1 so the observed probability we got 1 hey does this mean when we flip a coin we always get heads no right that's not correct but why did it happen when we say the probability of getting heads is equal to 0.5 what it means is if we repeat the experiment many number of times half of the times we get heads right that does not mean we'll do the experiment only once and if we get heads hey my probability is one it is not so 0.5 is not correct right it doesn't work that way or it can go the other way right when we flip coin only once we might get tails but that does not mean the probability of getting heads is zero right so that is why we need to repeat the experiment many number of times that's what the probability also means so the probability means when we when we do the experiment many number of times what is the likelihood or what is the chance of getting that particular outcome right so that's why it is important to do uh, the experiment many number of times okay for example okay let's see here right now let's do one more time uh, okay let me run this code right so this time we are we still flip the coin only once but this time we happen to get uh, tails so it's saying the probability is zero right so we can't do the experiment just once but how many times do we need to do the experiment we'll we'll see that in a minute okay so this time we are doing the experiment two times or we are flipping the coin two times okay so uh, when we did it first time we got one head sign one tails so the number of favorable outcomes uh, is one because we have one heads and the probability is 0 0.5 hey this is nice so does that mean we need to do the experiment twice to get the probability correct no we'll see one more time okay that looks good now see this time we flip the coin two times but this time we happen to get both time tails okay we did not observe heads even once so the number of favorable outcomes is zero and that has led to the probability zero right this is also not correct so that means even by flipping the coin two times we cannot compute the probability of heads okay so flipping the coin two times is not enough to measure the probability okay so we should do the experiment enough number of times or we should do enough flips so that the probability don't change or remain fairly constant right so let's do the experiment three times okay now so when we did the experiment first time uh, i mean when we flip the coin three times the first time we got head sign head sign heads now this again saying the favorable outcomes is three so the probability is one this is again not correct right so let's do one more time so this time we got only one heads so the probability is one third okay one more time okay we got one third now this time we happen to get all three heads again the probability is saying 1.0 which is not correct right so three times is not also not enough let's look at one more time before we do it many more times okay so here we are doing the exp we are flipping the coin four times okay so for example here we flipped it four times we got two heads and two tails uh, so the number of favorable outcomes is this head sign this heads two so the observed probability is 0 0.5 oh, which is a little better uh, compared to flipping the coin only once but this is also not sufficient okay so see here we flip the coin four times now we got hit three times 
that has led to the probability of 0 0.75 or 3 fourth, right? But we know the exact answer is 0 0.5, which is 1, 1 in a half, right? Sorry. Uh, it's 1, 1 in 2, okay? Not 1 in half. So even doing this experiment four times is not enough. Now let's let's use these loops uh, from Python or any programming language. We'll do the flips many, many number of times and we'll count uh, the number of hits each time and we'll then we'll compute the probability, okay? So here we are going to flip the coin maximum for 100 times, okay? So in experiment one, we flip the coin only once. Okay, and then compute the probability. In experiment two, we flip the coin two times, we compute the probability. In experiment 100, we flip the coin 100 times and then compute the probability, okay? So here we just defined this list, empty list, okay? We are going to collect uh, the measured probability uh, for different number of flips, okay? So here uh, we are looping uh, over this, uh, trials right so here we want to flip the coin up to 100 times okay so first time we will be flipping the coin only once okay so we'll be the number of k number of trials so this will uh, start with one and it will go up to maximum trials okay okay so here we have the outcomes and from the outcomes we are counting how many hits we have and that is our favorable outcomes so we divide the favorable outcomes with the number of trials, okay? Then we'll get the observed probability. So this observed probability, we are simply storing it in a variable, in a list variable, so that we can see, later see how the observed pr probability changes with the number of uh, trials, okay? And here we are just printing some information, which is the number of trials, the number of favorable outcomes, and the probability, okay? So when we run this with maximum number of trials 100, this is what we saw, okay? So in a first experiment, we did only one trial and that happened to be hit, the probability is one, okay? In a second experiment, we flip the coin two times and both happened to be hits. So again, the probability said one, right? In a third experiment, we flip the coin three times but we got only one hit. The probability is 0 0.3. So as you can see here, this probability is fluctuating quite large depending on how many times we flip the coin, right? Now, maybe here you start to see somewhere here, the value getting close to maybe between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 but it is still fluctuating quite a large, right? Between 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. And maybe here it is even uh, just uh, below 0 0.4, okay? Now, when we flip the coin 100 times, let's see what happened. So this time we flip the coin, let's say 99 times. Out of 99 times, we got hit 43 times, okay? We got hit 43 times. So the probability is uh, this uh, of 0 0.43. Actually, this is a number of trials plus one. So this is 100, okay? Number of trials, uh, we are starting from one. Okay, all right. So if we plot the number of trials versus the observed probability, this is how it looks like, okay? So here we simply store the observed probability for each number of trials, right? So we are simply plotting uh, the observed probability, okay? So, and then we are plotting a horizontal red line, 0 0.5. This is the ex expected probability, right? The exact probability we computed before. So this is the expected probability and the blue one is the observed probability, okay? So as you can see, it's fluctuating quite large. So even when we did the experiment 100 times, the value is still fluctuating, okay? depending on how many uh, 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 the trials we did. Now let's do the experiment uh, 1000 times, right? So basically we flip the coin 1000 times and we measured how many times we have hits 
and that's this point uh, it looks better but still as we can see maybe if the red line is 0 0.5 maybe this is a 0 0.55 0 0.45 let's say so it is still fluctuating between 0 0.45 to 0 0.55 okay now here we did the experiment 10,000 times uh, so for 10,000 flips the distribution is getting narrower and narrower as you can see here so this is looking better now here we did the experiment 100,000 times okay 100,000 times and as you can see uh, the fluctuations have uh, reduced very significantly okay so the probability is getting the observed probability is getting closer to the expected or the theoretical probability as we increase the number of trials okay so that's the law, law of large numbers okay that's why we need to do many number of experiments so that the observed probability can be as close as to the expected or the theoretical probability okay uh, that's all for today uh, thank you very much